and are we ready? All right. I'd like to call the Skagit Transit Board of Directors meeting for March 15, 2023 to order. The time is 11 o'clock. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag to the flag of the states of America and to the republic mm -hmm. to grant one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, we welcome our folks in person and online. I'm going to ask Whitney to help with the roll call of uh, members. I am Jill Boudreaux, Mayor Mount Vernon. Commissioner Browning. Commissioner Janicki. Commissioner Wieson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Mayor Miller? Here. Mayor Sexton? Here. Councilperson Aslett? Councilperson Holst? Here. Our CAC Chair Judy Jones? Here. And our Labor Representative Colleen Kennedy? Thank you. Um, just a reminder for those online, if you uh, might be mindful of keeping yourself on mute, I will try and watch for any um, raised of hands or comments that may come from that direction. So we'll move into item number four, any public comment, any public comment, first of all, in person. Seeing none, any public comment from those joining us online? All right, seeing none, we'll move along. Item five is the consent agenda action items. There's two items. The item A is the approval of the February 15 minutes, February meeting minutes, and B is the approval of claims and payroll. Madam Chair, if there are no comments, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, motion by Julie and a second by Peter. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Moving into the full discussion and action items, item 6A is a monthly budget update report. And I believe Chris is going to lead this off. Good morning. I'll start off with uh, talking about sales tax revenue. Our sales tax for February, which is actually two months, there's a two month lag. So this is for December, 2022. It came in $56,000 higher than uh, in the prior year at this time. Came in at $1,470,642. Uh, January's sales tax revenue collections or November, uh, it was $130,000 higher in 2023. So we're seeing, you know, in the neighborhood of a 12% increase this year so far, but that's for the latter part of 2020. Not specifically, I haven't gotten to that level of detail. I do have the access, however, to, to look that up. So thank you for asking. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah. Um, our grant revenue for the month of February, we received $85,133 in federal grant operating revenue. From state operating grant revenues, $130,971. We also have a $500 local operating grant um, receipt, and that was just from the Association of Washington Cities for our wellness grant. Um, fair revenues for February came in at $41,160. As you can see, that's less than in in uh, prior years on the on the sheet. It was fifty two thousand seven hundred six dollars in twenty twenty two. I suspect part of this is due to um, youth ride for free, but I'm sure there are other elements of that as well. So um, on the expense side, notable expenses: our MOA two project is um, in focus now. Our professional services and leased equipment expense for the month was $38,493. We also paid payment applications 11 and 12 that summed a total of $771,475 in the month of February. It's 95% of that is the roof, the re-roofing project. So we're wrapping up those expenses. These are their, their payment application requests are always after the work is completed. It's never before. It's important to note that. Our ending cash balance at the end of February was $4,835,331. Our investments total with, our, with the county treasurer's office, total 
$359,914. Um, our interest earnings for the month of February are just over $79,000 on that investment. The total cash and investments to date well, through the end of February are $25,644,188. So the, and back to our MOA2 project, the total amount we've paid to HB Hansen to date on this project is $3,648,248. And that sums up what I have. If you have any questions, please do All ask. Right. All right, questions for Chris, um, the budget update report from those here in the audience or at the board meeting. Any questions from folks online? All right. With that, I'd entertain a motion to accept the monthly budget update report for February. Move to accept the budget report. Thank you. Second. A uh, motion by Peter and a second by Lisa. All those in favor, please say aye. Um, aye. aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Item 6B is the commitment of local match to Federal Transit Administration Buses and Bus Facilities Grant Program. And Chris is on stage for this one. We are, the subject of this uh, informational item is a commitment of local match to the Federal Transit Administration 2023 Buses and Bus Facility Grant Program. So Skagit Transit is preparing an application to the FTA's 2023 Buses and Bus Facilities Grant Program. The application requests funding assistance to complete phase three construction of the maintenance and operation and, and administration facility project located at 11784 Bay Ridge Drive, Burlington. Phase three is the final phase of the facility project to replace the current maintenance operations and administration building, which lacks capacity and is located within the Skagit River floodplain. As part of the FTA buses and bus facilities grant program process, a local match is required. The granting agency is requesting an agency letter of commitment for the local match to be included as an attachment to the application. The scope of phase three construction includes renovation of the maintenance shop site, improvements and full development of the vacant parcel to the north of the facility. Phase three budget estimated is, the estimate is $16 million. The project includes $5 million in FTA requested funds, $5 million in Washington State Move Ahead Washington funds, and $6 million in local transit sales tax revenue as a match to the federal funds. Staff recommends the board to approve the local match share and commit to the FTA local match. The obligation of the funds will take place in the budget year 2025, to the best of our knowledge. Chris, just to be clear, that's only if we receive the grant. That is if we receive the grant. This is a Which grant. we hope we do. However, we just, yeah. All right. Questions for Chris on this? Any questions from the board members online? All right. With that, I would, let's see, what is the motion here? Let's entertain a motion to approve the local match share and commit to the FTA local match if our grant is received. Anyone? Move to accept to approve the local match share based on getting the funding. Thank you. Motion by Peter and a second by Matt. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Item 6C is the approved fleet wide coach Wi Fi gateway upgrade hardware purchase. Is Chris here? Yes, I'm, I'm virtual. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm technically on vacation, but I wanted to make sure that if there were any questions on this, that I was available to answer uh, those questions. All right. Uh, thank you. So upgrading the fleet-wide mobile gateways to 5G is an essential step in keeping up to date with the cell phone protocols that we use on our coaches today, um, while at the same time providing new guest Wi-Fi services to our passengers. This project will replace units currently in service that are unable to adequately support both guest Wi-Fi performance or guest Wi-Fi and performance of the agency-specific data's needs. In September of 2022, the board approved the process of attaining quotes and bringing to the board the final purchase resolution, 
when the quotes have been attained. At the time, we estimated about 72 units were needed, and at the uh, since then have reduced this to 65 units. This will cover our fleet and provide us with spares. We asked the board to approve a not to exceed cost back in September of $316,000. And the quote we are ordering in comes in well under that cost. We also have grant funds available to pay for all of the hardware costs. And I have confirmed with the vendor that we would like to award this to um, their ETA of the equipment would arrive in time for grant funds to be used. Our recommendation today is that the board approve the fleet wide coach Wi Fi gateway upgrade hardware purchase from Green Ramp Group LLC. Uh, the budget impact uh, would be zero, um, provided that we get all of the equipment before. Uh, the June deadline, which I have ETA'd from the vendor, is um, possible. That quote came in at $229,500, including tax and all the hardware. All right. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Lisa? Um, a question. Chris, thanks for the presentation, and it's good news when you see something come in under budget. I just was um, going to um, acknowledge that Crystal is here and, and just ask if if this technology, you know, some of these decisions as we've made come along and we're like, oh, wait, we're going to have a new, you know, CEO at the point. But Crystal, does this technology match up with what you've seen out in Sphere? Are we, are, are we getting to the front of, anyway, where are we in conjunction to what you've seen happening in um, other jurisdictions for onboard Wi-Fi technology? Yeah, I think this is a positive move for us. We we just got done implementing Wi-Fi in all of our buses prior at my other agency prior to me coming here. I think it's going to be especially use, useful for um, our commuters. So I'm supportive of it. I like to say that there are people who lived outside of the snow globe called Skagit County, and it's it's good to be <laughs> affirmed. So good job, Chris. All right. Thank you. So I, I just have one question. The, the grant has already been awarded to Skagit Transit. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, I believe it's an operational grant um, that we use it or lose it by June uh, 2023. So and how much was that grant award? Uh, the specific grant, um, I am not familiar with which one we were funding from. Maybe Chris Stamey could help with that. Was it a general, like a general operations grant? It is. That? It is an operating grant, and I'm caught off guard. I don't have the exact amount. That particular spreadsheet I didn't bring with me. We have so many grants. My the number that comes to mind is three hundred eighty-four thousand dollars for that grant, but I could be mistaken. I, I certainly can find that out and email you all with what that is. And that's fine. I I just want to make sure it's it's the award is sufficient to cover the cost and and with the reduced it, cost, obviously it is. But It certainly is and it is budgeted. It's It was in the approved 2023 Perfect. budget. Okay, thank capital you. Expense. That's a good clarification, Steve, because it was like, oh wait, we didn't, yeah. So thank you for asking. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Ron, go ahead. I had a question, what happened to the seven you don't need anymore? I mean, did you <laughs> sell some vehicles or what happened? I mean, I, No, I, I, I was a little, um, ambitious with my spare ratio when I was getting the original quotes. We currently have um, 80 units that we have that we maintain licensing for, and we have a bunch that sit in, in our shop until they're needed. Um, so over the history of the existing units we do have, um, it didn't warrant the extra uh, units that we don't necessarily, uh, or I should say are, excuse me, are not going to use. So it was a little bit of a waste to get that many. Thank you. Chris, thank you for historically looking at what you may not need to overorder, but having some spares I think is smart. So I appreciate you looking efficiently at that. Steve, go ahead. Can I ask one follow-up question? So you meant, Chris, you, you mentioned that um, as long as we get these delivered by July for the, the time, that that's kind of the time frame. What happens if, with supply chain issues that often pop up, they we aren't able to execute that purchase by July and the grant. Are we just on the hook for the two hundred and some thousand? We would so potentially, the built the, yeah, we would potentially be on the hook. But that's why I was working directly with the manufacturer and also the vendor that is supplying the equipment to make sure that it would get here. 
they're estimating it would show up in in May, the uh, tail end of May. Most of the stuff would be showing up before uh, May. There was a couple antennas or adapters that were showing up a little late. So the cost and currents of the um, what would be left over that we wouldn't be able to use the grants wouldn't be a majority of this two hundred twenty nine thousand. Thanks. from here in person. Any questions online from board members? Seeing none. All right, we're looking for a motion on this. I move that we uh, um, approve the staff recommendation to uh, approve the fleet wide coach Wi-Fi gateway upgrade hardware purchase from Green Ramp Group LLC. Yeah. I'll second that. By Lisa, second by Ron. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aries, thank you. All right. Moving on to our community advisory committee report. There are minutes in your packet from the February CAC meeting. Um, I'd ask if Judy's on, if there's anything she would like to add about the CAC. I think we're going to be adding an agenda item, but if Judy, if you want to speak to that, that'd be great. Okay. Well, uh, as, as far as officially th that we're adding to the agenda item, I will uh, give that over to Brad when I'm done with my report or else whenever okay. you want to fit this in because okay. it has to do with approval of a new member. Yay. So, you know, an applicant at least. So that would be great. She did speak yesterday at our meeting and uh, we were all very impressed with her experience. In fact, she worked in the King County transportation industry along with one of our current members who did too at the same time. It, you know, it was several years ago, but it, you know, that's great. So we're hoping that, uh, that this will be approved today. We also had further continued discussion on uh, route priority, the frequency increase. Uh, Brad has asked us all to do some homework on that so that he could submit some of our recommendations to the strategic plan as it gets underway. Uh, he's gonna be taking recommendations to the uh, planning committee um, you know, like as pe as people turn them in. And we had some really interesting conversations about what we would like to see happen there. Mm -hmm. um, and he also is uh, reporting that there is strong ridership increase for uh, February and even the first half of March, we're seeing that. So that's exciting. Uh, there's also for anybody traveling in Island County, and uh, Anna Cortis in that area, Island County's making some transit, some service changes and schedule changes. So if you're gonna be in that area traveling with a bus, make sure to double check your schedules because they may not be what you're used to just while they're going through these changes. Cheryl also reported on the uh, Community Connect event um, for vulnerable uh, populations in Anna Cortis. Uh, and also it was stated during the roundtable segment that CAC recruitment efforts need to have a uh, more Skagit County, you know, uh, Skagit Transit muscle kind of behind it in the form of maybe a uh, stronger social media presence, you know, maybe putting a static uh, CAC recruitment banner on the FB page, possibly in uh, members attending more of the appropriate market, marketing events for Skagit Transit. Also, we would like to see some agency-wide understanding of who the CAC really is and how we can support, how we are supporting the agency as a support entity. Uh, also, one of the things that we've been working on is we've been having a Skagit informational table at Skagit Station. And I created just a really simple spreadsheet of general availability of members like for morning and afternoon of any of the weekdays. So I gave that spreadsheet to Brad and he's he's got that. I sent copies to the membership and we I it's gonna be very easy to keep that updated so we all know at any given time who can staff uh, an information table. So that pretty much wraps it up. Our next meeting is April the 11th and y'all are welcome to attend our meeting for 30 Skagit Station or online via Zoom. Respectfully submitted, Judy Jones, CAC Chair. Thank you so much, Judy. Any questions from the board for Judy? All right, seeing none, um, I know there was a, a request to add a approving of a CAC member to the agenda. So I'll ask Brad to 
speak to that and then we'll see what the board would like to do. Yes. Um, as per the CAC bylaws, we uh, do bring new members. Once the CAC makes a recommendation, we do bring those to the board for formal approval. The Skagit Transit Community Advisory Committee has received a new application for membership, and the CAC has met with the candidate and is recommending the following citizen be approved to be a CAC member. Her name is B.J. Carroll. She's a resident of Laconner. Uh, at its March meeting, the CAC moved to recommend approval of this application for the new member. Um, and so staff also recommends approving this new member. Um, as uh, Judy talked about, she did used to work for King County Metro. In fact, she was back in the beginning. Uh, she actually worked for a sewage authority that took over transit and some other functions and formed what is now King County Metro. She was back with those days. She also went on and transferred over to the Metro Division, to the Transit Division. She was the first uh, female supervisor for King County Metro uh, back way back then. And so she's got quite a storied history. She did customer service. She did planning for them. She had a number of roles inside the agency. And so we're really glad to uh, have her on board. Oh, I think what we need to, to oh, sorry, go ahead, Ron. How many uh, members are on the board right now? We have 11 members. She would be the 12th. We are authorized to have up to 16 members. Yeah. I think rules-wise, I need to have a motion to add an agenda item to today, which would be to, to add the agenda item for approving a new CAC member. Is there a motion for that? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Go. Second. Second. Okay. So motion by Julia, second to Peter to add this agenda item for approval of a CAC member. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Um, Brad's introduced the um, recommendation for BJ Carroll. Any questions about that? All right, happy to entertain a motion to add Ms. Carroll to the CAC. Move to approve to add Carroll to the, which, which? CAC. 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 Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion by Peter, second by Lisa. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. All right, thank you for finding another great person to add. Um, under informational items, I'm gonna look, I guess, to Crystal on this one <clears throat> to introduce. Um, uh, before we start then to talking about our third party engineer and our KBA contract, um, just wanna appreciate um, uh, Mayor Miller for being our vice chair and attending some regular meetings with our new CEO. And just for the board's information, we have those scheduled weekly every Tuesday afternoon um, through April at this point, just to provide support, um, to be there as just conversation with Crystal, give her history or um, get her feedback on things. So we're, um, I think, moving as supportive as we can as the transition continues two weeks in. Thank you so much. She's still here. We're thrilled about that. Um, <laughs> so item A is our third party engineering review finding. So I'll turn it over to Crystal. Yes, I did hit the ground running, and I do want to say to Mayor Boudreau and Mayor Miller, I do um, appreciate your support very much and the ongoing support from you and the rest of the board. Um, so I'll speak to this, and Aggie here, who is um, in charge of the product, project, may speak to it as well. But um, we did do, or we did receive rather the third party, the peer review from OAC, and they found no additional major issues which would cause any um, project delays. So we're prepared to move forward with that. Um, KB, moving on to the next one. Um, any, KB, hold on. Any questions from the board? If you recall, <clears throat> we had had some concern about um, some of the architecture and things. So we asked for just a third party to take a look. And as Crystal mentioned, nothing major or new. But Lisa? And my recollection was it was to confirm constructability of the revised. Correct. Yeah. So great. Okay. Thank and, you. And once they completed that, um, we were supposed to receive a a new schedule and a new start date from HB Hansen. We have yet to receive that, but Aggie and I are working closely with that team to get that moving again, because we know obviously um, the importance of getting this project moving. Um, 
they are currently working there right now. There's been, since there's been some delays in the project, there is rust uh, that has settled onto the um, steel foundation part of the building. So they have a crew out there, is it today or tomorrow? Uh, there's actually a crew out there right now doing some just general housekeeping since the building has been open and exposed to the elements for quite a long time. And one of them will be addressing the rust that we're having on the new steel that's been installed. <clears throat> and then again, we should have a um, a schedule and an actual start date, um, hopefully by the time we meet again next week. You can update the board at our April meeting then, hopefully with that good news, so okay. Um, and then next is the just the KBA contract amendment and extension. So I'll ask Crystal to speak to that. Yeah, so I've, as I've come in and started reviewing this um, project as a whole, the contracts and such invoices, um, one of the things that that this team discovered is that we are actually out of contract with KBA. Um, that contract expired December 30th, I believe, of, of 2022. Um, so we are working to um, resolve that issue. And just for the board to know it in a greater sense, um, KBA did not realize that their contract had expired either. So um, Matt and I have been working with Crystal and we'll have that all resolved by our next meeting with an update on project management going forward. So, any questions on that? We probably never thought we were going to be there. Long, anyway, <laughs> December of 2022 seemed a long way out. Um, I'm guessing right. when. And we were actually operating under the, that we were under contract with them until the end of March. But um, thanks to Crystal looking for some details, we realized that that wasn't the case. So we'll, we'll fix that. And that was my error when I looked at it originally. I thought it was March of 2023. Turns out it was March of 2022. Addendum number four, I believe it was, took that contract out to December 30th of 2022. So we're working on uh, getting a new contract. Well, we're working on that right now. So we'll get that fixed for, for next meeting. All right. Um, and then uh, February ridership report. Any comments on that from staff? So. Yes, we are continuing to see some pretty good ridership this year. Uh, year to date, our ridership is up 20.24% over uh, 2022. And for the first half of March, uh, we are again in the 15 to 20% range um, for ridership increasing over the same month of the last year. So we're seeing a pretty good trend here. Um, I can tell you from looking around in the industry that our ridership increases are significantly higher than what most other agencies are seeing around the state, what we're hearing from them. So a lot of agencies are flat or in the low single digits for increases. So we're seeing some pretty healthy growth. All right, Peter. And again, you, you, can you get a feeling for where the increases are coming from? Young people, old people, somewhere in between? I would definitely say youth um, have uh, been a considerable part of that. We're seeing about uh, 2,000 to 2,300 extra rides out of youth fare free over what we were getting this time last year. We're also seeing a lot of growth from our uh, pilot project deal with Western Washington University. Um, we have a program, they get free transportation from Whatcom Transportation Authority. We entered into a pilot project two years ago where their students and staff could ride us for a flat fee. Um, we are in the process of negotiating a permanent uh, agreement on that. But what we've seen is it's coming into the 800 to 1100 uh, rides a month range for us from that. Whereas last year, they were not on full classes. They were in the four to 600 range. So we've pretty much doubled from that little segment. So there's been little programs uh, that we've gotten into place that are really paying some dividends and it's nice to see. All right. any other questions? Oh, go ahead, Lisa. I just, my, the puzzled look, um, the, uh, 800 to 1100 rights per month for the Whatcom student and faculty out of 1300 per month, that's on my chart. No, I must have, I must have misunderstood. Well, that. no, I mean, it varies a little bit each month. So I, we may be at, uh, uh, for this month, we're probably, let's see, Western Washington. It's, uh, we had 893 rides this month from Western Washington University. I guess, is that a subset of the fixed route ridership that is on the 
first or on the first oh. page of the ridership. Yes. Case, so that's the overall of the so ADX. We mostly service Western Washington University in ridership. Um. So the uh, no. So the 893 rides are through our entire system. So there's a number of folks that may live in Anacortes, Cedar Woolley. So they come down and then they'll transfer to our local routes. Um, we have some Western Washington University staff that live down here that I think probably commute up out of Chuckanut, um, you know, or other park and rides. Um, and then we get about two thirds of Western Washington University students live in the Seattle region. So our goal in promoting this is we're trying to tap into that market, especially when they come in as freshmen and they can't have their own cars for us to be their transportation option when they head home on the weekends and for holidays. So you know, we've we've seen some nice growth, nice growth from last year to this year, and we really view this as a target market for us. Yeah. I have a comment, maybe it's a request. And as Steve will kick me if I say I'm the new guy, but as one of the newer newer board members, as I'm trying to help uh, Crystal uh, with this, one of the requests that I had was. We name the routes on the rider report. How hard is it to add, you know, 409? Uh, what what is what's on the bus next to it? Because I don't have the route numbers memorized and uh, I don't think the rest of the board members. Well, they do because they're they've been here long. Yes. Uh, one of uh, Crystal's tasks for me is to develop uh, a simplified uh, version of our ridership report that is going to be a little easier for the public and everyone to digest. So that is underway. Thank you. And, and per the request of um, Mayor Miller and Mayor Boudreaux, there's also some additional information that we're gonna be providing moving forward. Um, I'm gonna work with the team to figure out exactly what that is, but we're looking at perhaps trip cancellations and of any other um, information that our, our riders might wanna see, you guys and our riders. So we're working on that. All right. I think that's... All of our business. Oh, Dale, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get the pleasure of taking you for the next time I'm done. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, very cool. Nice. Um, seven and a half. Twenty-seven and a half years. This is my three hundred and twenty-six working. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Thank you, Dale. And I should. I forgot to mention our event this weekend on Saturday morning. Uh, at Okay. Someone help me with the, if I'm going to get the right place. Jennifer. So our first annual meeting since COVID began will uh, take place at the Skagit Casino Resort and Hotel uh, beginning at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning and will run for approximately two hours. So you've all been invited to attend. I know some have uh, other obligations, but we look forward to seeing you and um, hope it'll be a great event for all of our employees. Great. Thank you. Your welcome. board can make it so. All right. With that, I believe we've finished all of our agenda items. So we'll go ahead and adjourn our meeting at 1134. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ron. Um, one of the committees I'm on is a Pioneer Picnic, and traditionally SCAT has provided the bus to be there at our Pioneer Picnic is uh, first Thursday of August, and so it's August 3rd this year. So I'm requesting that uh, SCAT have a uh, bus and driver available for that picnic. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. He's, he's promising stuff on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to answer that. <laughs> All right, great. Then we'll be adjourned again, 1134.